Hello everyone. My name is Yus Yusuf. I am from Leeds. Uh, I'm reporting for RIM now uh, to cover the EULA 2023 uh, at Milan. Uh, today uh, is a uh, post EULA day. Um, I'm now uh, back in the UK. However, uh, I would like uh, to uh, present uh, an interesting um, study that uh, potentially would provide a, a glimmer of hope uh, for people uh, living with uh, Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, as we all know that currently there is no licensed uh, therapy uh, for the management of uh, moderate to severe um, primary Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, therefore, um, you know, we need a more effective therapy uh, to treat uh, these patients. Um, so uh, there were actually uh, two um, interesting uh, um, abstracts that were presented, which actually related to one single uh, drug. Um, so uh, the drug is called uh, Dazodalibab. Um, so this is a CD40 um, uh, ligand uh, antagonist, uh, which uh, blocks uh, the T cell interaction with a CD40 expressing B cells. Uh, thus, uh, this uh, will provide a disruption to the overactivation uh, of CD40 ligand co-stimulatory pathways uh, that uh, uh, leads to uh, pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases, including Sjogren's syndrome. So uh, both of these studies um, uh, uh, were uh, in phase two trials. Um, so the first one was uh, actually uh, number OP0143. Um, so uh, in this trial, so it's a different population of Sjogren's syndrome. Um, so these uh, were primarily uh, investigated in those with uh, moderate to severe high uh, disease activity as defined by uh, SDI score of uh, equals or, or more than uh, five score above. Um, so in this study, there were 74 patients were randomized into two groups, uh, one uh, in the Dazo Dalibab group, another one is placebo, uh, and the primary outcome is the reduction in SDI score. Uh, in terms of uh, the results, um, uh, the study met the primary endpoint so in the Dazodalibab group, um, there were around uh, six uh, point reduction from baseline, whereas the placebo uh, is, is just over a uh, four points reduction. Uh, therefore, um, the uh, the delta difference, uh, which were around 1.3 score, and this was uh, statistically significant. Uh, however, we have to bear in mind as well, uh, looking at this results, uh, the placebo response seems to be high as well, uh, because there were four points reduction. Uh, and as we all know, uh, that the uh, MCID for SDI is actually a reduction by three points. So something that we need uh, to, you know, uh, to look forward to in, in the next phase of the trial. Um, and uh, the second trial, uh, which is uh, more more interesting, as we all know, um, previous trials have failed to alleviate uh, patient symptom burden, including fatigue uh, and dryness. Uh, so that's why uh, these days uh, a lot of uh, the trials are concerning patients with uh, systemic manifestation or extra glandular manifestation. Uh, in this uh, study, um, so it was presented at the late breaking abstract. So it is a LB003. Um, so this one population is different. So uh, the uh, investigators uh, studied uh, the patients who uh, had high symptoms burden, uh, however, low disease activity. So this is really uh, quite a uh, tough uh, population uh, uh, you know, to be uh, treated, although majority of the patients uh, actually have these uh, you know, problems. So it is interesting. Um, so they define this as a ESPRI. Uh, so ESPRI score uh, is actually a composite, uh, so basically average of uh, three uh, versus score of uh, dryness, uh, fatigue, and also pain. Uh, and so they included patients with ESPRI score of more than five. Uh, however, they have SDI score less than five. So uh, in these uh, studies, uh, a bigger number, so the, there were 109 patients, uh, were then randomized into two groups, again, the Dazodalibab and also the placebo group, uh, and the primary endpoint is the reduction in uh, ESPRI. Uh, and uh, uh, this study uh, uh, met the primary endpoint, uh, for which uh, there were more patients treated in Dazodalibab uh, uh, have 
have high uh, have uh, more reduction in aspirin uh, compared uh, to um, uh, uh, the placebo. Um, so uh, uh, this is really interesting uh, because of uh, recent studies uh, where some drugs who have got uh, a positive phase two trials uh, did not show improvement in aspirin. So improvement in aspirin uh, patient symptom burdens are quite tough to uh, you know to break. Uh, and, and these studies actually, uh, this is the first study that actually showed uh, that uh, it may be effective uh, in those who have high disactivity and also those who have a high symptoms burden. So I think um, in, in a way, this is providing some uh, sense of optimism uh, and a glimmer of hopes uh, for the treatment of primary Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, however, uh, as we have to uh, uh, interpret with caution, uh, as this is only uh, phase two RCT uh, and both, uh, and, uh, the drug will actually evaluate uh, both population in the phase three and, and the recruitment uh, actually uh, undergoing currently. And we will uh, look forward to the results over the next uh, three to four years uh, in a, a, for, for this. Um, so I hope uh, you find uh, my summary uh, useful uh, and uh, you can follow me on my uh, Twitter handle, U6Yusuf, and you can follow Room Now uh, through uh, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn for more coverage uh, of the EULA 2023, uh, 2023 Congress in Milan. Uh, and thank you for listening. Bye-bye.